Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler from Melder Production, and in this one, I'm just going to show you some quick things that have been added in the newest version of the Melda plugins. So I'm using M Sound Factory here, and you see it's 14.12 uh, or 14.12, however you want to say it. There's some small things added, but there's some big things too. The biggest thing is the new silent uh, CPU feature. I don't even know what you want to call this. Basically, it cuts down on CPU when the plugin isn't being used. So you can see it right here. You know, it's like, why does this say off? And that means right now the plugin isn't processing anything. But if I push a button, you see it turned on, it turned green. So that means it's working. But now it's off again. We'll see once it drops down to nothing, it takes about a second or so, and then it'll turn it off like this. The great thing about this is when the plugin isn't being used, it will drastically cut down on the amount of CPU use. If, for example, you have a piece where you're using tons of synthesizers, or even, let's say, if it's just one synthesizer, two synthesizers, but they're using, you know, all sorts of modulation, they have tons of voices, etc., this will actually help you because if, let's say, in the chorus, you're using M Sound Factory, but in the verses, you're not. So that means now during the verses, you'll drastically cut down on CPU usage. So it's just one of those kind of nice things where it, it will save you some CPU and you won't have to freeze things or bounce things to other tracks quite as much. And also with the multi-core option, it goes from a really powerful synth that hogs a ton of CPU to something like, oh, this is actually really usable in, you know, any of my projects. So there you go. I just wanted to explain that. If you notice there's any problems like, ah, I don't like this for some reason, or like it seems to be cutting off notes or whatever reason it's not working for you, just go into settings here and here where it says intelligent disable on silence, just turn that off and you see it's on all the time. But if it's working for you, just leave it on. I believe it's on by default in the new version. So. Hopefully I explained that well. The other small thing I wanted to talk about is here in the wavetable. So you see we have the wavetable module here. Let me make it a little bit bigger. And it looks about the same as before. It has the wavetables here. I can scan through them. But there's one really big difference, which for me is a big thing, although it really doesn't add too much to it. You see the visualizer. For me, this is just kind of like a quality of life difference. For me, this is much better. I can see, you know, what's going on here. If you're like me, you like that kind of stuff. And we can go in here and add, what should we add? You want to add an envelope? Like this, for example. And we'll have this control the... I can make it go all the way to 100 like this. So we can actually see it moving, which is great. You can see the waves in there. And of course, we move to, you know, other things in here. Uh, let's see, FM growl like that. I don't know why I have so many extra waves. It looks like it was only 20. So let's move this down 20 like this. Not such a smooth wavetable, sorry about that. But you get the idea. You can see here, you can count how many are there so you can see everything in here. Just a nice visualization. I know it's a small thing, but for me, I, I just like that. The other big thing with wavetables, and one thing you should make sure is, make sure you're using the 256 for this, is 256 uh, tables. You see here, there's 8, 40, and 256. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'll show you the batch import. And you're wondering, what is that? So before I showed you how you could import uh, wave files and, or sorry, wave table files. But sometimes that's annoying if you have a bunch of wave tables, you're like, oh, okay, I download this wave table pack. I don't want to go and click this and then import it and test it. Oh, that's terrible. Do the next one. You know, it's just lots of clicking and lots of wasted time. So now they have this batch import so I can import a bunch of them at the same time. I'll show you how you can import them and I'll show you a way you can organize them yourself. So I go into batch import, wherever you have them here, like I have this base tables, you find this online. Luckily there's tons of free wavetables nowadays, so you can find them, just search online for free wavetables. And I click OK. You see here, it's scanning them all in. There's quite a few here. There we go, looks like it's about done. Waiting one second, OK. 
So now I have all these wavetables in here. Uh, I don't know why that, I guess, does it always have just <laughs> sine waves at the beginning? Wow. Okay, actually, let me move this down a little bit more. Move the octaves down, I should say. Here we go. Yeah. And we have that. But you're saying, okay, what about the rest of them? Now, just go into wavetable here. Click it. And now you see, oh, a new table called imported. This is where all the imported wavetables are. So I can click on this and... So you see here, all of them have been imported, and this is really useful. Uh, and one thing we can actually do with this is, let's say if you like these, but you think, I don't like all of them. There's some of them are really good, like I like the mandatory one, I like the mandatory two, maybe, let's say mandatory 59. <laughs> what I might want to do is import those, but leave the other ones behind. So I can just go in here and add, and let's say, uh, I don't know, base growls, or whatever you want to call it. So I made a new folder. Where is it? I think I made one. Oh, no, I made it inside there. Don't be like me. Don't do something foolish like that. So delete that. Make sure when you make this new folder that it is here on the root. So add and I'll call it base growls. So it's not inside my imported folder like I just did. So now I have a new one, base growls. Now I go into the imported and I can just drag and drop. Like, oh, okay, put that one in there. Uh, do like three? Put that one in there, and then 59, or whatever else you like. And so now, like, ah, oh, that's all I like from in there, and I think, okay, that's enough, and I can just delete the imported folder. Like that. Actually, let me make sure I go on to another one like that. Okay. Imported, delete. So now I just cleaned everything up and I can take what I want, you know, by going through there and I can just scan through them one by one, find the one I want or the three I want. And that way I don't have a like, clutter. Also, I believe this will take them and change them to a different format instead of the normal wavetable format. So now that I'm done with this, all those wavetable wave files I have on my computer, I can just throw those away and they'll be saved inside uh, M Sound Factory if that's what you want. Or if you're someone like me, like oh, I have other wavetable synths and things, you can just find that wavetable folder and use this command here on your computer to actually not import here, imp batch import, to find it. And you can scan those in so you can use all those in M Sound Factory. For me, this is a really good, you know, quality improvement. It doesn't really do too much new, but it just saves time and it makes everything look better and it makes, you know, more fun and easier to use, which is always good. So that's it for today. Uh, if you haven't checked out my other videos on the actual Wavetable module, do that because I show some things in there. But uh, if you like this, give me a thumbs up, leave me any comments down below and check out all the other plugins at MeldaProduction.com. Till next time, see you.